is just, this is the worst time that I've known my team being affected by this sort of thing. You know, for, for hardy farm guys to be not quite reduced to tears, but somewhere on the edge, it's just terrible. And this is not new. This is happening all over the southwest, all over the country, every day. Mm. It's just that it goes unnoticed. The, the current policy is that the animals have failed the test, so therefore they have to be removed from the farm. Um, and unfortunately, in this case, it means that although there is some compensation for the animals that are culled, actually there's no compensation for the unborn calves that would have been coming through into the business. The DEFRA agency responsible for TB testing said TB can have a devastating effect on farm businesses, which is why there are strict measures to control it. Reactor animals are removed and slaughtered as quickly as possible to help control the disease and reduce the risk of spread within the herd. Badger supporters say cows spread TB to badgers, but farmers say it's the other way around. George says the point is they're animal lovers. It's overlooked the fact that the poor old badger is dying a horrible death of TB. You know, the, these animals are being slaughtered before they've actually got physical TB or the symptoms showing. But the poor old badger dies in his set and he'll take two or three months to die. Meanwhile, he's infecting some of his friends, he's infecting some more of the other cattle around. The controversial badger culls in Somerset and Gloucestershire are about to start again for the third year in a row. Natural England is expected to reveal soon just how many will be culled this year. Janine Jansen, BBC Spotlight. Well, Dominic Dyer is from the Badger Trust. I asked him how we can move on from killing cattle and badgers as a way of tackling TB. Well, I think we've got to be very careful that we don't play the badger blame game. I think every time we have a TB incident like this and cows are slaughtered, particularly in this situation where you're going to lose calves too, it's a tragedy for the farmer, and I do sympathise. But we shouldn't just blame badgers. You know, it's, it's something that we see an awful lot happens in this debate. At the end of the day, there's no such thing as a closed herd. Poor biosecurity on the farm can also lead to the spread of the disease. And we're also concerned that other vectors in the wildlife uh, areas, there's, there's foxes, there's rats, there's deer, all of which can spread TB. So this focus on the badger we think is not helpful. But, but how is taking cattle out of the equation once they've been identified with TB but not taking badgers out of the equation going to get to a point where we are clear of TB in the wildlife? Well, we support badger vaccination and also long-term cattle vaccination as well. In Wales, what we've seen is a 48% reduction in new outbreaks of TB. Over 98% of the herd is now TB-free, so it's definitely worth doing. That's why the government is giving more support to it. That's why we're working with the Wildlife Trust to give more support to it as well. But if we vaccinate cattle long-term and come down on those biosecurity and control movements, we can really tackle this disease without having to destroy wildlife. You mentioned earlier on about biosecurity. Don't you think farmers for a start having their cattle herds taken away and slaughtered, don't you think farmers are doing their bit towards trying to tackle the issue? They don't have money to spend on biosecurity because I think they've been let down by their industry and by the government. The pricing situation for milk, in my view, is disgraceful. So I think farmers need more investment from the retail chain and more support from the government to actually put in place proper biosecurity measures to prevent cross-contamination between wildlife and cattle and the spread of TB. Okay, Dominic Dyer, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.